Basimpui and Basimpui come villages refute senior citizen association of Nagaland's claims of NSC and IM, taking over and controlling the Intangi National Park, calling the claims misleading. Village Council clarify Hebron camp does not fall under Intangi National Park but within the old Jaluki village. JP deals with a blow as Wokha District Unique President Yanfungo Kikon resigns from his post. In his resignation letter, Kikon expresses dismay over functioning of party leader and Deputy Chief Minister Y. Peton. Nationalist Democratic Progressive CM Rio announces cash awards of Rs 50,000 for gold, 20,000 for silver and 10,000 for bronze medal winners. After a months long saga full of twists and turns, world's richest man and Tesla CEO Elon Musk finally acquires Twitter. Musk begins his Twitter ownership by firing top executive CEO Parag Agarwal, chief financial officer NED Segal and legal affairs and policy chief Vijaya Gade. Welcome to Nagaland TV. You're watching NLTV News Now. I am Yashira and now the news in detail. As the Intangi National Park jurisdiction row has been in the headlines for the past few days, four villages, Old Jaluki, Jaluki Kam, Besumpui and Besumpui Kam villages have refuted the claims made by Senior Citizen Association of Nagaland of NSC and IM taking over and controlling the National Park. In a joint statement, the village council of the four villages clarified that the NSC and IM designated Hebron Camp is not within the jurisdiction of the Intangi National Park, but within the jurisdiction of Old Jaluki village. It further stated that the boundary between Jaluki and Besumpui is clearly marked by the Mongliu River, so there is no room for confusion and misunderstanding. The statement asserted that neither the government of India nor the landowner village will allow for parting any land within the national park to whomever or whatsoever reasons. On the issue of Camp Hebron, the village council said that the establishing NSCNIM council headquarters at Camp Hebron was done with the proper understanding standing during the regime of former Chief Minister Dr. S.C. Jamir in the late 1990s and the land does not come under the park. It further reminded that there is an agreement and condition that the event of NSCNIM leaving the Hebron camp, the land will be repossessed possessed by Jaluki Kam village and Jaluki villages, the original land owners. Bharatiya Janta Party Wokha District Unit President Yanthungo Kikon on Thursday tendered his resignation from the president post with immediate effect. Following his resignation, Kikon has cited several reasons expressing dismay over the functioning of veteran BJP leader and Deputy Chief Minister Y. Patton. In his letter to state BJP president, Kikon stated that Patton has become arrogant and insensible to all party karyakartas after being the home minister for two terms and besides being the deputy chief minister. He also claimed that Patton does not entertain any supporter at his residence or office. Kikon further cri criticized Patton saying that Patton has failed to keep his commitments to his voters, citizens and the party karyakartas. It is to be mentioned that Yatungo, Yang Tungo, Kikon Kikon had served for two terms as BJP Wokha District Unit President. Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party President Chingwang Konyak on Thursday inaugurated a new party office for FEC region at FEC district headquarters. Several NDPP functionaries were also present in the program. Notably, the inauguration coincided with NDPP President State Store along with host of party leaders, legislators and others. While addressing at the inauguration program, Chingwang encouraged party leaders and workers in all five assembly constituencies in FEC region to have better coordination 
coordination and understanding to strengthen NDPP. He also stressed on the pre-poll alliance between NDPP and BJP, stating that the seat-sharing formula of 2018 assembly election was on an experimental basis, which turned out to be a huge success. Hence, he called upon the party workers to be prepared for the upcoming election. Meanwhile, Ching Wang also welcomed the new leaders and members from the political parties who joined NDPP. The Catholic Association of Nagaland, in association with Nagaland Catholic Youth Movement and Nagaland Catholic Women Association, is going to organize the first Nagaland Catholic Choral Fiesta on November 5 at Capital Cultural Hall in Kohima. The event will be held in the theme Una Fide Una Voce, which means One Faith, One Voice. Can can President Johnny Wangmei, during a press conference, stated that the competition includes nine choirs which were shortlisted out of 20 choirs during the audition round held in last August. Wangmei said that the competition aims to spread the message of oneness of the Christian faith. On the other hand, the Fiesta competition will be selecting top five choirs. A cash prize of Rs 2 lakhs will be awarded to the winner, followed by Rs 1.50 lakhs and Rs 1 lakhs to the first and runners-up, respectively. A cash award of Rs 50,000 each a consolation, as consolation prize will also be awarded to the fourth and fifth position holders. special press conference to inform the people of Nagaland, especially our Catholic members, that the Catholic Association of Nagaland, Nagaland Catholic Women Association, Nagaland Catholic Youth Movement, we are organizing for the first time Nagaland Catholic Choral Fiesta, which is happening in the month of November 5th, 4 p.m. at Cultural Hall Kohima where our Sir Abu Metha, advisor to the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, is coming as a special guest. And our guest of honor would be none other than our Tatma advisor, Sri Tezameru. And the chief patron is our bishop, Bishop Job James Topil, the Diocese of Kohima, Bishop of Kohima. And we have nine choir teams selected, shortlisted from the entire states during the uh, audition. And audition had completed and nine choir team will be participating. And special appearance from many uh, Mingu Sukhre and people also will be coming to take part of it. The idea of why we are having this Nagaland Catholic Choral Fiesta is we have selected the theme Una Fides Una Voce, that is one faith, one voice. The beauty of Catholic Church is also that whether I am black, whether I am brown or white, or whether I belong to different ethnic class and tribes or caste under Catholic Church, we are all one. We say the same prayer and we say the same in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A fire broke out at a restaurant in Doyapur Market of Dimapur District in the wee hours of Friday, where some rifles personnel who were on duty at TOB Doyapur helps, the, helps to douse off the fire. It is to be mentioned that the restaurant is located at the center of the market and the fire could have destroyed the entire shops in the line. Without the quick action of the soldiers of 47 Assam Rifles personnel regarding the incident, the Doyapur Bazaar Committee appreciated the quick response of the Assam Rifles personnel in extinguishing the fire. Mon District Tobacco Control Cell jointly with District Police Department on Thursday organized a sensitization program on tobacco use and its harmful effects on humans at the Council Hall in Mon. Resource Person and National Tobacco Control Program District Nodal Officer Dr. I. Simon Sumi focused on the increasing number of oral cancer cases, mostly caused by tobacco consumption in India and in Nagaland. Dr. Sumi also highlighted that tobacco causes many diseases such as leuclopia, ulceration, oral submucous, fibrosis and urged the participants to seek medical help in case of any symptoms like stiffness of fibers, mouth opening restriction. Superintendent of Police 
Imna Lensa also attended the program and urged the Javans to be a responsible citizen and to quit tobacco before it affects their loved ones. Jaffa Christian College on Thursday organized a skill development program at Zappa Indoor Stadium in Jaffa Christian College. The program has been organized as a part of college initiative in promoting vocational skills among students. Shushi Chief Kekruwili Rutsu, who had earlier worked with Taj Hotels, gave a master class on sushi preparation during the program. The chef also encouraged the students to follow their dreams diligently. JCC Principal Dr. Visa Konu Hibi Hibo also had a demonstration on Japanese and English floral arrangement. To commemorate the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel on October 31, the Nagaland Board of Education has asked all the institutions to register under NBSC to organize Unity Run. The board urged the schools and colleges to give educate publicity to the event and wherever feasible families of students, local community should be asked to join the run. Furthermore, the board stated that photos of the activity should be uploaded on social media under the hashtag Run for Unity. can be done in group, in individual, at any time, at any place. But to do that, we need positive attitude. We need to give time for exercise. If you don't make time for exercise, probably you may, or you will make time for illness. And a new day like this, it's a new opportunity to improve your health, your fitness. So as we observe this even, let us all remember that making fitness is an integral part of our daily lives. With these few words, I thank all the participants for taking part this event and I wish all the best. Fit for run can be done in group in individual, at any time, at any place. But Kohima Smart City Development Limited on Friday organized the third edition of the Fit India Freedom Run under the theme Azadi Ke 75 Sal Fitness Rehe Bemisal. The run was flagged off outside Indra Stadium at 6 a.m. and culminated at High School Junction. More than 300 people, mostly students, from various schools have participated in the run. KSCDL Chief Executive Officer K. Thuno, while addressing the participants during the flagging off, the run said with a new day comes new opportunities to improve one's health. He further urged them to make fitness an integral part of daily lifestyle. Nagaland will be sending a team of 305 athletes to participate in the upcoming 2nd Northeast Olympic Games 2022, which will be held at Shillong, Meghalaya, from November 10 to 16. A special program was organized at Kohima's Hotel Vivor on Thursday by the Nagaland Olympic Association for the Nagaland Contingent at Kohima. Chief Minister Nafurio, also the president of the Nagaland Olympic Association, addressed the gathering at the event and announced that a special incentive Incentive will be provided by the state government where crash awards of rupees 50,000 for gold, 20,000 for silver, and rupees 10,000 for bronze medal will be handed over. Rio further added that the state is still lacking behind in terms of sports, and the State Olympic Association got affiliated only in 2004, which is after 41 years of statehood. Rio also assured that an indoor stadium will be constructed in every district along with the AstroTurf 
football facilities in few years time the member number of athletes who will be representing the state in the upcoming northeast olympic games this year will be highest ever and will be participating in 17 disciplines out of 18 events most of the participating athletes were selected from the recently concluded nagaland state olympic and paralympic games 2022 the team is scheduled to leave on november 9th Commitment you have to give. Very difficult. Dedication and determination to become somebody. That commitment you have to give. <clears throat> From your slide, ground zero, some of you have spoken about your. It's a full time job and also it's a hard, hard work to be put into. In many of the platforms I had also mentioned that the Olympic Association had decided to bid for the national games. I explained earlier also. It's very difficult to say what are expectations because we don't have a seeding system in the Northeast but last time as per records Nagaland finished fifth in the medals tally. I am hoping that we improve upon that. The first Northeast Geology and Mining Minister's conclave is scheduled to be held at Naito Resort in Chumukudima, district on October 31. According to officials, Ministry of Mines will organize the conclave and Union Minister of Coal and Mines and Parliamentary Affairs Prahlad Joshi will grace the event as chief guest. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal on Thursday wrote a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi requesting him to put pictures of Lord Ganesha and Goddess Lakshmi on currency notes alongside Mahatma Gandhi for economic prosperity of the country. Notably, Kejriwal shared the news via his Twitter handle on Friday. In his letter, he asked why the country's economy is currently going through a rough phase and India is acknowledged as a poor or developing nation even after 75 years of its independence. Adding reason behind his demand, the letter read that on one hand, India needs to work hard to overcome its economic hurdles and on the other, it also needs the blessings of God. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is scheduled to virtually attend the Bhumi Pujan at around 3.30 p.m. of the expansion project of steel major Arcelor Mittal Nippon Steel India's flagship plant at Hazira in Gujarat Surat district on Friday. In yet another step towards the realization of PM's vision of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, the project will help in the production of value-added steel types that will help in strengthening India's position as a global manufacturing hub of steel. Notably, with an investment of rupees 60,000 crores, the expansion project will create diverse employment opportunities in the state and Gujarat and across the country. In a horrific incident in Uttar Pradesh's Prayagraj on Thursday, six people lost their lives and five sustained injuries after the vehicle they were travelling collided with an electric pole and overturned. Additional Superintendent of Police Gangapar A. Agarwal said that the injured were sent to the hospital and post-mortem of the dead is being conducted. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, while expressing his condolences over the loss of the lives, directed the Prayagraj District Administration to give proper treatment to the injured.
The Border Security Force on Thursday recovered a bag containing arms and ammunitions that were smuggled into Punjab from Pakistan. Sources stated that the search was conducted about 10 meters inside the Indian territory ahead of India-Pakistan international border, following which three AK-47 assault rifles with six empty magazines, three mini AK-47 rifles with five empty magazines, three pistols with six empty magazines were recovered. Inspector General of Punjab, Frontier, BSF Asif Jalal said that the bag containing the weapons was recovered by troops deployed near Jagdish outpost in Ferozpur sector. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday in his annual address to the Valdai Discussion Club lauded Prime Minister Narendra Modi's independent foreign policy. While addressing at the conference, Putin stated that PM Modi is a great patriot who is able to pursue an independent foreign policy. He further said that Russia has no outstanding issue with India and that the countries have also always supported each other. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Britain's newly elected Prime Minister Rishi Sunak on Thursday agreed on the importance of early conclusion of a comprehensive and balanced free trade agreement. Notably, in a telephonic conversation on Thursday, Modi spoke to Sunak and congratulated him on assuming charge as UK's PM. Meanwhile, Sunak taking down to Twitter thanked his counterpart, congratulating him on his new role and said he was excited about what the two great democracies can achieve as they deepen their security, defence and economic partnership. Furthermore, it has been learned that the leaders also agreed to meet on the sidelines of G20 Leadership Summit, which is scheduled to be held mid-November in Indonesia's Bali. On the day two of Chintan Shivir, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, via video conferencing on Friday, emphasized on the internal security of the country. While addressing at the Chintan Shivir of Home Ministers of States, PM Modi said that brainstorming session at Surajkund is in Haryana is an excellent example of corporate cooperative federalism. Notably, Modi floated the idea of one nation, one police uniform during the conference. Furthermore, referring to the use of technology by criminals from beyond the border, PM Modi also underlined the need for states and central law enforcement agencies to coordinate. While on the other hand, Union Minister Amit Shah during the event said if all states do not come together to fight the crimes related to terrorism, money laundering cases, then it will be impossible for the country to face the consequences. बहुत जिम्मेवारी के साथ उसकी गंभीरता को समझ करके कुछ न कुछ करने का प्रयास किया है कहीं पर शायद सफलता पहले मिली हो कहीं देर से मिली हो लेकिन हर एक को इसकी गंभीरता में आज समझाना पड़े ऐसा नहीं है अब हमें ताकत को जोड़ करके इसको हैंडल करना है जी इसी प्रकार नक्सलवाद नक्सलवाद के हर फॉर्म को हमने पराजित करना पड़ेगा बंदूक वाला भी है और कलम वाला भी नक्सलवाद है हमें इन सब का काट निकालना पड़ेगा जी हमारी युवा पीढ़ी को भ्रमित करने के लिए ऐसी बचकाना बातें कर करके चल पड़ते हैं लोग और इतना नुकसान देश को हो रहा है और आने वाले दिनों में कोई संभाल नहीं पाएगा जी और इसलिए हमने जैसे नक्सल प्रभावित जिलों पर फोकस किया है उसी प्रकार से उन्होंने अब अपना इंटलेक्चुअल दायरा उन जगह पे पहुंचाने का प्रयास किया है जो आने वाली पीढ़ियों में विकृत मानसिकता पैदा कर सकते हैं एक दूसरे के प्रति द्वेष पैदा कर सकते हैं इमोशनल चीजों को आउट ऑफ प्रपोर्शन उछाल करके समाज के अनेक टुकड़ों में खाई पैदा कर सकते हैं बिखराव पैदा कर सकते हैं 
देश की एकता और अखंडता सरदार वल्लभ भाई पटेल हमारी प्रेरणा हो हमें ऐसी किसी चीजों को देश में चलने नहीं देना है जी लेकिन बुद्धि पूर्वक करना पड़ेगा समझदारी से तत्कालीन समय में जब कानून और व्यवस्था आंतरिक सुरक्षा की समीक्षा करते हैं तो कई इस प्रकार की समस्या ये ध्यान पर आती है जो बॉर्डर लेस है जो राज्यों की सीमाओं से परे हैं जो क्षेत्र से भी परे हैं और देश की सीमाओं के उस पार भी उस पार से भी कई क्राइम हो रहे हैं जैसे कि आतंकवाद नारकोटिक्स की समस्या मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग की समस्या घुसपैठ की समस्या ड्रोन के माध्यम से हथियारों और नारकोटिक्स की तस्करी हो और हमारी सीमाओं की फिजिकल सुरक्षा की बात हो जब तक पूरे देश की पुलिस और केंद्र की एजेंसियों का ये सभी समस्याओं के प्रति रिस्पॉन्ड एक समान नहीं होता इस समस्याओं के प्रति लड़ने की हमारी रणनीति एक नहीं होती एक दिशा में एक साथ होकर सभी राज्य आगे नहीं बढ़ते हैं तो उनका सामना नामुमकिन है उस दृष्टि से आपका टीम इंडिया का विचार और चिंतन शिविर का आपका मार्गदर्शन गृह विभाग का जहां तक सवाल है सबसे Amid the ongoing Arunachal Pradesh Public Service Commission paper leak case, two members of APPSC have resigned from their designated post on Thursday. Notably, Central Bureau of Investigation on Wednesday filed an FIR in connection to the case. On the other hand, Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister Pema Khandu handed over the state cabinet's recommendation to invoke provisions of Article 317 in order to remove members of the APPSC. The crucial decision by the state cabinet came in the light. as the APPSC members did not resign on their own despite immense pressure from all Arunachal Pradesh's Congress presidents students union all Nishi students union for their removal to APPPSC members retired major general Bisht and retired major general Zarkin Gumbling submitted their resignation on Thursday evening Soon after officially acquiring the microblogging site Twitter, the richest man on the planet and Tesla owner Elon Musk made his first tweet wherein he said that the bird is freed. Musk's tweet caught the eyeballs of netizens as his acquisition of Twitter for a whopping 44 billion US dollars stirred lots of controversies over the past few months. Meanwhile, Musk has reportedly sacked chief executive Parag Ag Agarwal. Agarwal is well as company's chief financial officer and its held head of legal policy trust and safety as per reports musk also intends to reverse the permanent ban imposed on twitter users earlier the tesla owner sarcastically carried a kitchen sink to the twitter headquarters in san francisco and tweeted the video with a caption saying let the sink in That is all for now. Keep watching Nagaland TV for more news and updates. Nagaland TV, Sob Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Jio TV and on your television sets as well. For Dimapur viewers, we are on channel number 994 in Global Chapter and Kohima and Mokopchong.